Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to another episode of Rolling If You Got Them. Carl is always joined with Dakota. Hello everybody. Okay, so we've been working on this for a hot minute now, and we are finally ready to unveil our version one playtest of our Warhammer 40k Horde Mode Crusade a Palooza is its working title. It's a so, Crusade Mode Horde Mode beta. <laughs> yes. So if anyone's not familiar, um, the Horde Mode developed by the poor hammer podcast um we've played it a handful of times we've had a ton of fun with it we wanted to do an escalation style crusady sort of thing so we basically had to pour over the horde mode documents the crusade documents understand both of them figure out what things would work well together and then like if anything needed to be cut or not included or modified um we cut very little we modified some for the most part we tried to take as much as we could as worded from one and the other and just kind of push them together mm -hmm. we have a document that everyone can view um if they would like to follow along with the episode uh, we'll put that in the comments. It is a Google Doc. Um, or if you wanted to just check it out, print it off, have it at the table or whatever, if you attempt to try the Horde Mode Crusader Palooza. Okay. Yeah. Also, if you attempt it, let us know any feedback too. Like as we're going through this, we're just kind of tackling everything as we went through. I mean, I think really this this idea came from is we really like Horde Mode and we've never played Crusade, but we've each gotten like at least one codex at this point and we, i think i know i've read through the crusade rules and i'm like this is pretty cool like mm -hmm. kind of how i think me and you how we play it together it's pretty cool where it's like okay you can have units that like do a bunch of cool stuff and at the end of it you're like awesome uh and it's a little bit fluffier yeah uh, it's so like we basically we're trying to like smash them together so that we could co-op play and play crusade Right, so we could do like a horde story, basically, like yeah. the trials and tribulations of the dudes that survived the horde. Yep. Honestly, the hardest part is figuring out why Death Guard and Dark Angels are going to work together. Um, we're working good. on that. Maybe these are the Chaos Dark Angels, but they mm -hmm. use the Good Guy Codex. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So first and foremost, um, if you are following on a document here, point one, we have links to the horde mode document and the Crusade document so you're going to want to check those out if you're unfamiliar with either second point uh rp rp is used by both horde mode and crusade and they just caught rp horde mode uses reinforcement points crusade uses requisition points so we and this was just in texting back and forth dakota and i realized that this was an issue it yeah. needed to be addressed because we didn't know what the hell the other one was talking about half the time. So we have HRP and CRP, Horde RP, Crusade RP. So if you hear us use those terms, HRP and CRP, this is where they come from. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into the, the Horde mode modifications here first. So these were pretty simple. Um, we just added experience points and crp rewards to secondary and secret objectives in horde mm -hmm. mode yep. um the working version this version one we wanted to keep it as simple as possible each successful secondary objective is one experience for every unit on the table and then one additional crp after the battle we didn't want these to be like unobtainable but also we didn't want them to be overpowered mm -hmm. so we we're like you know what hey if you complete all five of your secondary objectives or maybe you um buy additional ones you know whatever then hey like are we gonna break the game by throwing out five extra experience i don't think so Probably but, not, but at the same time, who knows? <laughs> but who knows? So we're like, you know what? One is, it's the bare minimum we could do. We'll see what happens. And then also a successful secret objective 
will reward two XP to a unit of your choice and two CRP after the battle. Um, I thought about making it like five XP to a unit of your choice, but I wasn't sure. I'm still not 100% set on this two XP. Um, but we'll see. It, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of this too with like the XP and CRP, we, we honestly, we haven't even played it yet to see how much. It right. gets out of hand. Like, like we, it might just be too high. We might have to cut some CRP out of this because, like, like what number is too much? Like, what yeah. number is not enough? What number is Goldilocks? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, um, the second point. So, horde mode. When you build your list, you do not buy enhancements as part of your list building. They're normally 10, 15, 20, and twenty-five points. There's four options. There is a horde rp table that basically you can buy an enhancement for a character we wanted to keep this but if you buy an enhancement for a character that character then just keeps that enhancement mm -hmm. so you go into your next game it's kind of like you get a bonus 15 20 points you know whatever enhancement you got um which is is fine i think by the end of this thing if you have someone who Oh, I'm not accounting for 45 points in my list build. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares because yeah. we're at, we're adding in enough detriments, yeah. and we're giving the horde some benefits to where like we're probably going to need these things, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, secondly, for horde mode modifications, we're adding a a two RP reinforcement point thing to the table there which is basically where you can change your warlord um but between battles wait that should not be horde rp should it mm -hmm. that should be that should be crusade rp that is crusade rp yeah. okay we're adding a two crusade rp to where you could change your warlord between battles so your warlord has to stick around for the next battle, but if you want to swap him out entirely, leave him air quotes here on the ship. Um, we'll we'll get to that later. You have to pay two RP to do so, or you you don't have to leave him. You can bring him in your next list, but if you want to move warlord mm -hmm. ship over, yeah. you can do so. Not a big yeah. deal. And it's also just another way too to make you have to spend some CRP because we're kind of. I'm not going to say we're giving you a lot, but it's just like we're going we to might be. Make, yeah, we might be giving you a lot and you might need to spend it. Here's something you got to spend it on. Here's something to spend it on. Yep. Uh, so those are the basic horde mode modifications so far. Um, I mean, really not too much I think is crazy. Honestly, go into a horde mode game, play the horde mode game, get some XP, CRP on top of what you're doing within the horde, the horde right game. yep um some of the crusade modifications now uh so we have two two different things that we're going to go into um mostly it's going to revolve around like out of action the first points here out of action and then we're going to kind of get into how the list building will work um so we wanted to have like two ways to do this so out of action well i'll just start with this out of action all wounds and destroyed models are not just inherently returned after the battle um due to obtaining you know buffs um we feel uh you know buffs multiple resources we feel um, that need to self-impose some debuffs therefore obviously units are getting buffs um we don't want you to necessarily just like heal them right away uh is kind of where i'm going with this um, yeah there's so, ways to heal them with uh, with the crp and hrp yeah so in the the regular crusade after the battle, your units go back to full health. We felt that was a little too friendly. Mm -hmm. So if I got a unit of 10 Plague Marines and they finish the game at three models, like they're just at three models. Mm -hmm. Now there are, there's Horde RP and Crusade RP ways to heal these guys, um, both during and between battles. And then there's the out of action test, which is in the crusade that we are also slightly modifying. Mm -hmm. Um, so the the normal 
out of action test is basically roll a D6 on a one you fail, on a two you pass. Okay. And then you take it for anyone who got destroyed. Well, mm -hmm. in this one, if you, your unit gets destroyed, they're just they're just gone. Yeah. Those are that's a group of dead guys. Oh, then they're staying out there. <laughs> um but if you want to take an out of action test, you can take it anywhere on a one to six. And if you roll equal to or higher what you decide to take the test on, you will regain that many models. If you fail, then you fall into the, hey, I failed an out of action test as written in the crusade. Mm -hmm. So you, you get one for free because you're always going to roll equal to or higher than a one. But in that example, like I have three dudes and they started with 10. Well, I'm missing seven. So if I'm like, hey, I want to try to heal six guys here. I need to roll six on my D6. I may heal my six or most likely I'm going to end up uh, failing my out of action test. So that is an additional heal that we have kind of built in. You know, if I want to heal four models, I got to roll four plus. I got a 50% chance to end up with a, a devastating blow or a battle scar as written in the crusade. I got a 50% chance of bringing back 30% of my unit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then to finish that, once again, I'll use Plague Marines as an example. Plague Marines have two wounds each. If I have a dude who took one wound, he's he's just going to go back to his two wounds. So if I got three models at the end of the game, next game I got three models at full health. We're not going to worry about tracking that one wound. That was yeah. We're just going to worry about models here. I don't think there's going to be anything that's like crazily broken by not tracking the individual wounds. If you guys think of anything, let us know. Um, Cause even dudes with three wounds, it's like he, ha he had a guy down to one, whatever he can have his two back. Yeah. Just not think of it. Concerned. I think of it just role playing is he's going back to the ship and somebody's going to patch him up and he's going to be back to full. Yes. Full strength by the next time. Around. Yes. Once again, we, we wanted to lean into the, I almost said RP method. Like, <laughs> we, as, if we need another definition for RP, um, we want to lean into like the role play narrative kind of mm -hmm. rule of cool sort of heavy. So that mm -hmm. is our hardcore, air quotes here, our hardcore woundage. Um, Dakota, do you want to take the soft yeah. core? Yeah. So the, the soft core <laughs> that we're um... the Skinamax, so, <laughs> as, so... as we called it in in our working document. Mm -hmm. So in in my opinion, I do. I, I'll just I'll be out there. I think the hardcore mode it might be a little too brutal if you're trying to like really go into the crusade side. Yet again, I'm just saying this. We don't know for sure because we, we haven't don't like know. <laughs> we haven't tested this yet. We're just gonna kind of go and play it and then like adjust as we want. There's a good chance that one of you listening to this finishes the damn campaign before we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we did make a. If it gets a little too wild, tone it down a bit. Essentially, in the soft soft core version um units are destroyed they go back into your they're not like gone dead and gone they just get half xp that they would have gotten for the mission um you'll use out of action as written in the crusade doc basically like it's just us giving you the option to tone it down so if you read the hardcore and you're like that's a little confusing don't want to deal with that just do the soft core so vice versa if you're like yeah let's see how this goes let's test it out so the, the next portion here, so that's that's basically like some of the major crusade modifications. It's a lot of the out of action and like how you're dying. Um, some more of the like, this next one that goes into our next kind of point here, um, it goes more into our list building, which we're uh, calling the company capital ship. Um, which we can totally, for... Once again, role playing purposes, we can totally name our ships. I'm yeah. gonna use whatever name I use in uh, exactly. Hell Divers. I don't <laughs> yeah. remember the Bringer of War. I think, yeah, that's what yeah. we're doing. So, um, so basically, just we're role playing it as like your army is coming out of some sort of capital ship or ship or whatever the heck you want it to be that they're deep striking and fighting the hordes. Um, to make list building a little bit easier and to make it funner, um, more fun, I should say. No, I like when funner. When you start your list building, automatically go in, you get to pick 10 characters and epic character data sheets that you can that you want to use for the crusade. 
think of it as like your company commanders. Yes, the brass, these, the brass guys, up on the boat. These guys are part of like your. I don't want to say order. They're they're in your they're available for you to pick, and they're not really like in your order of battle. Is how I'll say it. Yeah. We didn't want to have like like I wanted to try to use a bunch of different characters and be fun and fluffy, um, but at the same time, I could you pick ten characters and then have five hundred points of just characters, and then it's like oh man like will i use all 10 probably not Mm -hmm. but we just want to make it where you had options open in list building and not be restricted in the way so you can you'll have these 10 characters basically each one of those character types has three uses so you might pick a captain you name him jabroni um battle one he goes out there and dies and now you're on to his brother steve um yep it just kind of goes like that obviously if jabroni lives he gets his xp keeps going you just follow like that you know, how we were doing it with, you know, healing and whatnot. Um, but you get three uses out of them. Once you use, so say you take three chaplains in a list, all three of them die, you're no longer got chaplains to throw in. Um, their points still do count for your list building. So the first game we're going to play is 500. Chaplain 65 points, I believe. That 65 points still counts. It just isn't going to, like, hold any points over, um, you know, like, what you have available. Um, for the list and like the battle or the reserves. Um, pretty sure that's it in the most part for the ten characters. Um, ep- epic characters they kind of just use like the soft core rules. Um, so you have at like say I take Dark Angels up, which I'm gonna, and I pick Azrael. I get three uses out of him to die. Uh, uh-huh. He dies. He comes back. He gets to heal. Um, gets half his XP. It goes again. That that way too. If you have your Asriels or Typhus, or maybe you're just going to like bring Morty and you know have him be 350 points or whatever of your 500 point list. Go right ahead. Right. You get three uses out of him. Um. And that's if they end the battle dead, because there's things like Ag- Angron that can respawn. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah. So, so so Angron has to end the battle dead to use one. Yes. If you play World Eaters, and for some reason, in you can like play test Angron. We're probably not going to ever play test him. Not really a big deal to us, but we did want to put a, a, a uh, just a something hold. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that's that's pretty much like how the characters are going to work. Just think of them as like extra points that you're going to get. They're in your order of battle, but they're not counting for points. Um. For army construction now. Um, well, they'll count for points for your army yeah. construction, though, right? Yeah, they'll count for points during yeah. your list building. They won't count for points of, like, do I have... Of the dudes on the ship. Correct. Yes. So, in your army construction now, um, we're playing 500, 750, uh, 1,000... 1,250 and 1,250 and 1,500. So, we're going to escalate this up as we go. So, the first game is 500. Um you'll also get 500 points available as your reserves. This will be other units are going to be part of your army. So essentially you're going to, the first game you have a thousand points quote air quote available to you. You're going to put 500 on the table to begin with. Then you have that next 500 points that can be used for your RP strats. So like your field promotion, you'd have to pick from that 500 points on your field promotion. Yep. Um, or, uh, um the other one where i can't even think of what it's called right now where you just like spawn a new unit in you're spawning a unit off that 500 points reinforcements arrive those units also gain any xp they would because they're part of your army and like you can just keep using them we didn't want to just like have like a unit spawn and then not do nothing and then go away you know right or it, like, like it, it does a bunch of things gained xp mm-hmm. and then like you just don't get it so you're like well shit now the rest of my army like didn't yeah. get access to this xp because these dudes played cleanup you know yeah. so like mm-hmm. this was kind of our way to once again find a goldilocks zone in these different combating uh rule mm-hmm. sets yeah so um, like f- for for me i plan on going very diverse for that backup 500 points mm-hmm. probably multiple small units like, I'm not going to put a unit of six Death Shroud 
in there. I'm going to put a unit of three. That way I can also put in like a unit of five Plague Marines that are melee focused and a unit of five that are range focused. That way, when I do call in my reinforcements, I can I can try to fill a gap that I have on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. If I'm going, oh man, the horde is spawning tons of infantry. Like I need Death Shroud down here because they got the 12 inch flamers. Mm-hmm. It's like I got to melt stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then you could even throw a version of each of those characters in that 500 points. So you could say, okay, I have a captain I deployed. I got an extra captain in the backfield. Like, yep. I can drop him in if I get a field promotion or whatever. However you want to do it. It just gives you that flavor. Yes. Yeah. Um, very, very flavorful. We mm-hmm. when in doubt, we wanted to go cool RP flavor with this. Yes. Uh, and then the kind of the last note with that, um, with the field promotion RP strap, uh, it does say on it destroyed. That unit isn't destroyed. Just it, We're just saying it's going back up to the ship. It's damaged. Yes. As, as per the, like the hardcore rules, it's going to be damaged to whatever it was left. Um, and then the u- new unit comes in. It can retain all of its XP uh, and everything it had going on, but it is damaged um, and can roll, you know, the out of action type of stuff. Uh, so don't just, it's not destroyed because it does read like the unit is destroyed and a new one spawned in spot. Just think of it as like a Thunderhawk came in, picked up your units, flew back up to the ship, and it dropped off other dudes on the way yep, down. Basically. Um, yes. Rule a cool thematic. Yeah. Like, and then these dudes are going to go up on the ship. They're going to stay safe. They're going to hopefully heal. I mean, they're going to heal up at least one with your out mm-hmm. of action, you know, because you can roll a one plus. But then, like, maybe you can get some CRP, HRP, whatever, and then yeah. buy these guys some wounds before the next game. Or maybe mm-hmm. you let them sit there for a game while you get those recesses to try to heal them. Obviously, you can't do the horde heal, the uh, horde RP heal on a unit on the ship during a game um because that is for like battlefield dudes yep. uh but you, you would have access heal. to the crp heal yeah okay and then these uh these last few points here um a couple of optional things really so we wanted to find a way to add deep strike options for the horde and we'll have more on our why for this in the next point but we we actually just kind of spit out like sort of a good idea we were like oh it'd be cool if they could deep strike like make it something easy you know and we go what if you pick a random unit on the table a random player unit and we said hey this horde unit is going to spawn within 2d3 of that unit and we were like oh shit that actually sounds that actually sounds kind of good so we we kind of refined it um so basically, if a horde unit is chosen to spawn for the horde, you're going to roll a d6. If the number rolled is equal to or lower than the current game round, that unit will then, instead of deploying in that deployment zone spot, they're going to deep strike. So if it's round three and you roll a one, two, or three, that unit will deep strike. Um, you choose a player unit at random. I'm assuming that we'll if we have seven or eight units out there we'll grab a d8 we'll number them roll it just be done with it um the horde unit will spawn within 2d3 of that player unit in a position that makes the most sense out of engagement range of all all, all player units now if all your dudes are bunched together and just kind of like moving down the field because we're going with a deep strike themed horde which we'll get to in that next point Mm -hmm. um and everyone's kind of like, you know, battle buddy down the battlefield. Uh, if the spawn is not possible, then place them as near to the random unit as possible, favoring the player's deployment edge of the board. We wanted to keep it simple. We didn't want to give people a bunch of homework just to deep strike a unit. If you can deep strike them, if it calls for a deep strike, drop them somewhere that's not the deployment zone. Mm-hmm. You know, drop them as close to their target as they can in a spot that is as safe as can be that like, you know, basically these dudes were hiding there Mm -hmm. in our company, moved past them and didn't see them. That's kind of the thing. Or they're like gargoyles or something that have wings and they just flew in behind them. Mm -hmm. Think of it like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Also, to one thing you notice, it's 2d3 away from units. So you might be like, oh, normal deep strikes nine inches. 
Um, this is very close. Uh, yeah, we wanted to make it easier for the units that are coming in to actually do their thing and activate. Yeah. So the nine inch deep strike, it makes it a little bit tougher to like hitting that nine inch charge. They could just fail it. And then you brought in a melee unit that's out in the open that didn't do anything. And it's not probably going to die. We're going to let them be closer to give them higher chances to hit that charge. They're already taking, they're already having weird probability of actually deep striking to begin with. So now that they're deep striking, we want it to be easy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to really create this uh, horror kind of like around these guys deep striking, which brings us into. Well, it, 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 kind of going off that. So even too, because like normally in like a game of 40K, when somebody deep strikes, they can like clearly think tactically to be like, I'm going to deep strike nine away, but I'm going to be behind this wall. So if my charge fails, I don't get shot. Right. The horde can't do that. It just right. can't. It's yeah, just they're they're yeah they're gonna be mindless sort of um which brings us in the next point we wanted to go with themed hordes so once again we didn't want a bunch of paperwork to do to do this so we basically said hey we're gonna play what is it five or six games Mm -hmm. we're gonna play against tyranids they have six detachments like let's let's pick a detachment each game for like the horde to kind of focus on so if we're using, and I, I can't even think of the name of it right now, but the the Lictors and whatever that Tyranid one is, were they a bunch of deep strikey, stabby dudes, you know? Um, each game will have a detachment focus. When rolling on the spawn table, 50% of the spawns rounded up will be focused on the chosen detachment. So we roll on the spawn table, like, hey, we have, you know, whatever, the tier, what is it, eight and nine, I think mm-hmm. is one. Um, okay, like if we have three spawns, let's say we're playing, uh, it's game two, we're playing 1500 points. I'm pretty sure that'll be three spawns. Two of these spawns are going to be focused on the detachment that we're playing against in this scenario. Uh, let's call it the deep strike, Mm -hmm. um, focus. And then, so they're, you know, so it kind of is going to play into that flavor. If it's the uh, assimilation swarm, like two out of these three spawns are probably going to be an infantry unit of 20 or one of their battle line units, um, or maybe two units of 10 on each of those s- spawns. So you're actually spawning like six units instead of just three to really play into that swarm sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and then. Finally, once all spawns are completed, we roll a D6. On a six, one additional spawn occur- occurs on a support focused unit. So your pyrovores and bi- biovores, just little things like things like mm-hmm. when you see them in the spawn table and you're like, if we spawn that right now, we're just going to shoot it and kill it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. where's the challenge in that thing? You know? Yeah. Um, so it really just made it a little bit more thematic You could even like change this up however you wanted to, where you could just like, you know, pre-plan however you wanted to do it. We just kind of set this rules apart though, just to make it a little bit more themey for the de- the types of detachments in theory that you're playing against. Yes. Just just to make it like in theory, not that they get detachment rules, but it's you know to be like, oh, we're we're playing the the Tyranid Vanguard. That's what we're playing against here. Yeah, right, right. Is that that's the deep strikey one? I don't know if that's a deep strikey one or not, but they have like Vanguard and then they got like I Invasion Fleet. And so <clears throat> as you move through, you just you can be like, oh, this one we're going to favor monsters. Yeah, you might know it and take a little bit more anti tank. Sure. But you can still be like, well, just to make it more fun, like rounds one and two, it might be like a lot of little dudes that are going right. to like pad the way for them. Right, right. And then our final point here is we are also going to implement an escalation style real life painting. So the models that we're going to use, at least in our our starting lineup, right? Our mm-hmm. our list, not our reserves, not right away at least, but our our starting lineup here. Like we are also going to do content on, um, kind of some uh some painting plays or just talking about our our list and what dudes we're bringing and why and we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna commit to actually painting these guys before playing our horde game because maybe we should have said this in the beginning 
uh, we're going to play these games on Tabletop Simulator, probably all of them. I'm assuming yeah. all these games are going to be played on Tabletop Simulator. Most likely, yes. Yes. So, but we wanted to, if if anyone out there does this in real life for all their games, like in, you know, very, I think this horde mode is very new player friendly because you can kind of have a battle buddy kind of walk you through the game and you have a much smaller list. You only are usually bringing you know, 500 to maybe a thousand points. Mm-hmm. So this is a very beginner friendly introduction to Warhammer. And then once again, we add the escalation style painting to where it's like, Hey, we're going to start this next month. You need to have this 500 points painted, you know? Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited about that. It, um, I've had my blight Lord terminators primed in Zenithod for, uh, when did we get the Christmas box? Was it last Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So they've been p- built primed in Zenithod for the better part of probably 14 plus months. And um, they're sitting on my table again, about to actually get the paint. So. Uh, yeah, I have multiple units like that as well. <laughs> yeah. And then once again, like the Blight Lord Terminators, they're not the best competitive choice, but they are usually the first boots on the ground for the Death Guard thematically. So I was like, oh, like a unit of five Blight Lord Terminators is going mm-hmm. in my in my starting list. Has to, 100 percent So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even, even into the uh the role playing here. Yeah, even me in my role playing, I'm definitely like every spawnable thing, I'm gonna have like a unit of Deathwing Knights. Mm-hmm. Because they literally deep strike in and like clean up drop. Like that's their role. You know. Yes. So so yeah, ho- hoping to make it more themey and fun. Yeah. So that that's all we have. Um, once again, this document you can go view it on Google Docs. You can print it. You can comment below after you read it and tell us all the things we messed up. Um, but if you do decide to try this, let us know what you think. We're gonna kind of keep everyone paint or uh posted here. We're gonna, you know, like we said, we're gonna do kind of um army introductions. We're gonna talk about why we're bringing who we're bringing we'll kind of have the paint and plays maybe on specific units that we pick and choose and then we'll have live streams where we are actually playing the games um but Mm -hmm. you know five games for us is probably if we're being entirely realistic it's probably gonna take five months to do it so it could yes it could take uh, us a while so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get after this um if anyone's still listening Thanks for checking it out, and we'll um, we'll see you guys soon with more of the Horde Crusade Palooza. Dakota, you got anything else? Nope. Just remember to check out our videos if you haven't already. Like and subscribe. Um, if you're listening at this point, you might as well just hit the buttons because we're quite well into this. Um, and yeah, check out other videos as well. Um, we have shorts and long form painting um, tutorials. Yes. All right, well, we will see you guys soon with more on our Horde Mode Crusade. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.